What is going on everyone? My name's Boyd and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the red color playing as Loki. His name is Matrius. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Odin. His name is Shadowfax. The map is Oasis. And this is the best of three for the group stages of the Artemis division. We've got a kind of a star-studded matchup for you today. It's been, a, it's been a long time since we've actually seen Matrius hardcore competing in, uh, in tournaments. I, have, I actually don't remember the last time he's actually placed in, uh, actually played in a tournament in all honesty. Like he's, his best performance ever was in the Masters of Mythology, which was the huge um, Age of Mythology Extended Edition one-day tournament we ran where he managed to come second. Uh, Shadowfax, on the other hand, he's been performing really, really well of late. I think he may have even had a first or a second finish in an S-tier tournament uh, recently. But we'll see how he's going to go here. He does opt into a, uh, a matchup he's actually seen already. This matchup was played very, very recently by Matrius against, uh, against Soup. But Shadowfax is the Norse Wars master. We say this every single time. He is he's the player who came first in the Fimble Winter Tournament. Uh, I think Fimble Winter 3 and 2, maybe if not also 1. He uh, knows the... He knows the Norse mirror inside and out. Deciding to go with Odin in this matchup. Thank you for the prime there, Howard Hughes. Appreciate you, my friend. And we'll see how this is going to go. But I do like the start here from Matrius. I love the double Ulf sucks here on this map. Grab as many goats as you possibly can. If you take a look over here, we see 11 goats for Matrius in the main base of Shadowfax. He's only got eight here as we do see some problems coming in here as Shadowfax does 100% need a house down as he, he hasn't got his house down yet. He's in a lot of trouble as he's going to be dropping that house there as the goat getting pushed back. We'll see if, uh, if Matrix is going to get a little bit concerned about this or smart about this and start actually hitting that Ulfsar because he does head over onto that location. We start to see some taunts coming down as the house does come through. Shadowfax is scrambling, will win this fight quite considerably there, especially with the help of the Odin regen as he's going to be moving back to his main base. But Madri is here. He's going to be just running straight past this and trying to clean up all of this black space to take the goats away from, uh, from Shadowfax. It's vitally important that he kills as many goats as he possibly can. But... Shadowfax does have nine goats. He did utilize the Great Hunt on his zebra, and he doesn't yet know where his uh, where his giraffe are, but I can tell you they're going to be over this side of the map. Meanwhile, we do see Matrius already moving onto his giraffe over there. He's got his temple coming up. He's also eating his zebra. I love this opening out of Matrius. This is something I've been seeing recently by uh, quite a few Norse players where they're opting in to going for the wood to get the third ox cart and then simply moving over to the second hunt to grab that and feel really, really good about themselves uh, because they're going to be on two different hunts. These villagers here will be able to finish up on the zebra and jump straight onto the wood line. It's a perfect opening here for this type of map. You've got to learn this if you're a Norse player. If you're a Loki player, you've got to know this. This is such a advantageous thing for Loki and Norse players alike to do on the low hunt maps, the difficult to advance maps. And Mattress shows us this uh, basically perfect here. As we move over into Shadowfax's base over here, we do see the houses coming down. The villagers will be finishing up on these zebra. He's 100% going to want to move over onto this location, but he does opt in to quite a delayed uh, classical age. Now, for a lot of a lot of my opinion in the mirror, in the Norse mirror, in any mirror, is the, the later advance time, generally speaking, there's not too much bad with it. You're going to be able to get out the same amount of uh, Hursa as your opponent. As long as you start those that Hursa production a little bit earlier, you should be fine. We can see that Shadowfax is behind a myth unit right now, and that's it. Longhouse coming down now for uh, Matrius as well, as Matrius is going to opt in to taking out Shadowfax's misplaced house here. I love this opening here from Matrius. Really good decision to take this house down. One, it puts Shadowfax back uh, slightly. Two, there's not really going to be any pressure onto this. And three, he's going to be building up favor to get himself Hall of Fanes and start getting himself those myth unit spawns. Now, we do see Shadowfax. He's got to be he's got to be aware that 
his hunt here is going to be under threat here in this game. So he does have to sit on that. He does have to defend that. Shadowfax loses the house. He's going to be dropping this house down. He will have a slight amount of uh, villager idle time there, but nothing too crazy. As Matrius finishes up on his goats, he's going to have to come back to the main base. Let's take out how many goats he's ended up with. 15 goats in his main base. Shadowfax, on the other hand, gets nine goats. So, well, 10 goats here if this one can get back home. A considerable advantage for Matrius. But is it going to be enough here in this game as the Giraffe getting eaten up? He would do so. The Olves are getting pushed back. Is Shadowfax going to be retreating away for the time being? We are starting to see some Hursa, some uh, some Thrown Axemen also coming out as the uh, Hursa of Matrius are coming in here looking for a little bit of a fight. I do believe that Shadowfax is going to be feeling like he's in a decent position. A good micro thus far from Shadowfax. He's picked up a Relic here as well, grabbing the Ring of Nibblewung here. As we do see at the top side of the map, he's found a couple more goats, and his, and his Valkyrie is just going to be sitting back, waiting, watching, dreaming as the uh, as the giraffes just about out, but there are still two gazelle here, and Matrius is going to be wanting to take this fight as soon as he possibly can, as Shadowfax is distracting with that Hursa as best as he can, and instead of trying to eat the uh, the gazelle here, it looks like Shadowfax is going to be retreating back to his base as. Uh, Mattress did not want to engage there, but Shadowfax doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't feel like he can actually take this fight just yet. He's, a, he's one Hursa behind, but he has four throwing axemen, so he, or five throwing axemen. He definitely will be able to win these fights. This Hall of Fame is just about to come through. We do see a Longhouse coming down on this side here from Shadowfax as he's trying to block the retreat path from Matrius. But Matrius here is going to be pulling back. We do see the villagers jumping over onto the uh, chicken over here. If we take a look, we've got Husbandry already in for Shadowfax as he's going to be wanting to rush to the heroic age here but Matrius is well versed in this matchup the question is going to be what is the right play here do you go for a second town center do you not go for a second town center we see the raids coming through here good reaction from Shadowfax to pull back Shadowfax will be wanting to eat all of these chicken I wouldn't mind seeing a wall thrown up here at some point as Shadowfax does get that down nicely there to defend himself as we do see a Valkyrie pushing into this location going to be getting a couple of shots onto the villagers he's got to be careful with the Valkyries he gets a lucky uh, kill there on that goat from the forest fight. He's got to be careful with the Valkyrie. Definitely not really uh, a unit you want to be throwing away. And now the Hall of Thanes is in. The Valkyrie stops being so valuable here as we do see the walls will be getting finished off. And Shadowfax's Valkyrie looks like it might be getting sniped down here by the troll, by the Hursa. And that's going to be a dead Valkyrie. That's a lot of favor going over to Matrius as well. You can see the difference Actually, not that big of a difference, obviously, that Matrius has spent 10 favor here on the Hall of Thanes already. So it's not that big of a difference thus far, but I'm sure very soon here, Matrius is going to be spawning his first myth unit as Shadowfax goes up to 83 population. He's still happily eating the goat in his main base. He does have to be careful not to overdo the Hursa so he can get to the Heroic Age here, but... He also has to be careful not to go too little on the army and risk the Loki player simply just being able to push through his opponent here. And we'll see how things are going to go as the house coming back up on this position, moving up over here to check out Matrius. Both players have got their upgrades. We do see an interesting upgrade for Matrius where he's got a hand axe and we see Matrius... This is part of the game plan here for Matrius. He's going to be grabbing his second town center here. The difference is now in the matchup we saw of this, we saw uh, Shadowfax versus, not Shadowfax, Matrius versus Shelty. And Shelty went for the second town center. Matrius went for the second town center. And Matrius was able to hit a timing to take the town centers down before Shadowfax could hit the Mythic Age. So the question here, is Shadowfax going to be going for a town center? Or does he simply just rush the Heroic Age here as the gold mine does expire? We do see the units over here. We'll have to look to defend that gold mine over here very, very shortly. As Matrius is pushing over there to check that one as the units are going to be moving in onto this position to defend. Shadowfax has stopped all production for the time being. He will be needing a handful more longhouses here. The uh, population advantage is in Shadowfax's favor as he will be able to hit the Heroic Age first here in this game as those Hursa are looking to push in onto this position. Scardi is being clicked up here. Shadowfax will probably 
immediately start those throwing Axemen up again, trying to get back up to full population as we see some more units coming in onto this position as the Longhouse drops down. Mattress is going to be using this as an opportunity to start harassing Shadowfax's units here. Shadowfax not paying attention here. He does have to turn around. He's going to start taking the fight immediately here as he's going to be attempting to take down those Hursa. Mattress trying to micro this as best as he possibly can here as he gets a Valkyrie spawn being long awaited as we do see the Hursa going to be taking down the troll on that position over here as the Thrown Axemen doing their best job uh, at defending on this position. Another Valkyrie spawn, however, here for uh, for Matrius as Shadowfax will have to retreat back. Shadowfax has got a whole bunch of units on this top location. He's going to be retreating through the wall here to get away. Probably not going to be actually losing any units here. Moving up to the top side of the map to potentially grab that gold mine there, waiting for his uh, waiting for his heroic age. But the Valkyrie are out. Big, big advantage now for Mattress, but can he get up to this gold mine and gold staff Shadowfax is the big question. As Shadowfax does opt in to a second town center, he's about to be out of goats as well. So he will need to farm here in this matchup as the Longhouse gets taken down. We do see a uh, Hursa getting cleaned up there as the Iron here coming in onto this position here as Shadowfax is going to be able to deal with that one quite nicely with Bard Coffee Wing. Obviously, coffee is the essence of life. The essence of life is coffee. Uh, and... I'm going to be seeing Shadow Fax not quite being able to finish off the Iron Yard. Actually, he might if he wants to, but pulling back instead, we see a Longhouse coming up on this position. Mattress has got plenty of resources in the bank and be looking to go to the next age here. Plenty of goats remaining in the main, uh, in the main base there. As Longhouse going to be taking down on this position. We see walls getting thrown up over here to try and defend this. Shadowfax as Oxcart decides to go and do something very, very strange over there. Not sure where that one's going. As he does push through with the army, attempting to get in here. He does have this Frost Giant here. Keeping the Frost Giant alive is vitally important as he does manage to freeze the iron here. A couple of houses getting taken down here by Matrius as he's getting in to this position, doing a lot of good damage. As a Hursa does get taken down, Matrius is going to be pulling back ever so slightly. Where's that ox cart going? I do not know. He must have misclicked that somewhere. Shocking here as Shadowfax is too focused on this army. Not going to be seeing that ox cart. Literally just wandering in to the main base of Mattress. We see the uh, Bragi coming in. Shadowfax's ox cart gets spotted. An INER spawn on the back. You're not exactly what Shadowfax is going to, uh, what Mattress is going to want there as Shadowfax comes in onto the back and to be able to freeze the Valkyrie and take this fight a very, very big way. Those throwing Axemen trying to get through here. We do see the Longhouse gets dropped as Mattress is going to be knocking that one away here. The unit's getting a good trade on that location is now the Hursa coming up to the top side of the map here to try and uh, hit this gold mine. Shadowfax still doesn't have an ox cart out on this position as a Longhouse is going to be coming through. The Hursa coming through here as well as the units are all kind of out of position. There's a couple of throwing axemen coming up here to defend. We've also got the Hursa and everything else as the uh, units try and repair the wall as Matra is going to be pushing through here as best as he possibly can. Plenty of resources in the bank here for Matrius to basically go straight to the Mythic Age here if he so chooses. There is obvious. There is a huge timing available to Matrius here now in this game, and that timing is going to be slam the market down and rush Tia here to drop flaming weapons for the winter, take out the entirety of the main base, and cause a lot of pressure onto Shadowfax. The Shadowfax's temple now going to be getting taken down. That ring of Nibblelung might get stolen away from Shadowfax as well. As Shadowfax's army trying to come over onto this position, a couple of units sitting at the top side of the map to defend the dwarves over here. He's doing a good job of that, but Matrius has clicked up to the Mythic Age. He decides on what looks to be Hell here, so not going for Tyr. Little bit safer, but is it going to be enough here is the big question. The the, uh, the Nidhogg will be able to sit on this gold mine and gold star Shadowfax something fierce here. Though Shadowfax, plenty of throwing Axemen out. At this point, he might be able to get himself the uh, the shooting up bonus, uh, whatever it's called in here. Uh, I always forget. Axe of Muspel plus 200% bonus damage for throwing Axemen against flying units. So that does work against the Nidhogg. There's no kill forts on this position here for Shadowfax. He's getting himself Winter Harvest, getting himself Plow. But Matrius here is in an incredibly strong position. As always, the answer that, uh, that Norse has to Loki is Ragnarok. So Mattress is somewhat on a timer in a way. He's also got getting his town centers up. He's got he's got his market up. He's got everything he needs. 
Uh, he's, he's putting walls up all over the place. Love to see that. Just pulling back, waiting, watching, wishing. Giving Shadowfax quite a bit of time here, in all honesty. Shadowfax has taken this time to get himself Huntress Axe, Winter Harvest. He's got Plow. He does have Frost here as well, so that's going to be useful to pick off an army or something, or at the, or the very least delay any sort of uh, attack with uh, flaming weapons or something like that. As the units now... I like that the, uh, the hill fort is up, but I'm not sure this is going to be enough as Shadowfax here will be seeing that uh, Mythic Age coming through. And the big question is, what's he going to do now as the Nidhogg drops? The Nidhogg is so absurdly strong. We see Axe of Muspel coming through immediately as another Longhouse going to be coming in. Shadowfax has got a very, very difficult game ahead of him right now as the Battle Wall going to be bashing on the gate here with the help of the Ainiar. We do see those throwing Axemen coming in to help defend over here as Shadowfax turns around. The Nidhogg going to be coming over onto this location to start taking down those dwarves off of this gold mine here. Uh, as the hill fort will be helping defend this one. We see some more units coming in here for Shadowfax, as it looks like Mattress is basically just now sending in some more reinforcements here with the Fire Giant coming in onto this position. The Nidhogg going to be taking a lot of damage here uh, if Shadowfax can manage to get those thrown axemen to start targeting it down. He, he's still got tons of HP remaining with 2,000 HP in one of the very, very rare matchups which the Nidhogg is managing to get some super hyper value going straight up to those thrown axemen as they're getting some good damage done, but the splash damage is able to take those Thrown Axemen down very, very fast here. Shadowfax will have to get pushed off this gold mine here very, very shortly. We do see the Frost, Desperation Frost, getting dropped down by Shadowfax. He's got no units remaining. The Nidhogg here is sitting at 1,000 HP. We see another Longhouse coming through as some more Thrown Axemen moving in onto this position. More Frost Giants coming through. And you do have to remember that the Frost getting dropped down at this point for Shadowfax means that... Uh, Matrius will have a, a flaming weapons to use straight after this and the question really is going to be what can Shadowfax do about it he can retreat back sacrifice the entirety of this front here retreat away and allow all of this to die move over potentially onto this gold mine over here as an option uh, and and see how he goes with defending where that's concerned as the Nidhogg does get pulled back over here, picking off some more units. There's more Fire Giant coming in onto this position as well as the fire, Frost Giant over here is going to be getting taken down. We do see the Frost Giant manages to get the freeze on the Fire Giant there. It's a big amount of time that Shadowfax is buying for himself. He's up to 130 population matches and 146 of, one, of 160 with 20, basically 20 more villagers here as the Nidhogg returns back onto those dwarves, getting some huge damage done as he's attempting to hold here against this myth unit feast here not only that champion throwing axemen are in for matrius here helping out matrius's damage quite considerably 6.3 damage per second compared to 5.85 plus 94 hp compared to 71 hp as the fire giants knocking on the gate here shadowfax has got a decent amount of food decent amount of wood gonna be pulling off the gold mine for the time being but instead he's not going to be able to continue here in this matchup shadowfax taps out matrius gets the dub and honestly I think that this comes down to one thing and one thing alone. This matchup here comes down to one decision and that decision happened at the very start of this game. What was that decision? Double Ulfsark. If Matrius didn't have all of the goats, if it was an even spread of goats, Matrius would not have been able to boom and be in the position that he was in. There's no reason for Matrius to have been there. But those extra goats that Matrius was able to secure with having the early second Ulfsark out allowed Matrius's economy to power him through enough that he could get in to the Mythic Age no problem and he gets all of the value out of having the Nidhogg, having the, the Fire Giants and everything else. And that's the story here from Mattress. We'll see if Shadowfax is going to be able to adapt here in game number two. If you guys are enjoying this series, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.